Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits on this beautiful Thursday morning in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. Uh, sun shining. You know, it's really a great, you know, it's, it's 8.30, so I usually give my, uh, do have my Zen Fit at uh, uh, 9 o'clock, but I'm early this morning. I'm pumped up and ready to go. Uh, <laughs> my wife is still in bed. I've been up since 5 o'clock, meditating, having coffee, my morning BM. <laughs> it's great to be 83 and wake up and be pumped up and ready to go. So what am I pumped up about? Ideas. My Zen fits. So the question I wrote down just now is, uh, what do you hold sacred? What do you hold sacred? What, what, sacred means ultimate concern. What is your ultimate concern? In our society, we, you know, the Western society since the Enlightenment and the uh, end of the uh, Holy Catholic Church, which put its dome of sacredness, the sacred sacraments, over Europe, Western man, when that just collapsed, uh, the Newtonian universe came in. Uh, what's the Newtonian word? Well, I can't show you, but this, this is, see that clock? <laughs> With the end of the Middle Ages and the Catholic and, and the uh, dome of sacredness of the church, uh, the world became Newtonian, a clock. It runs like a clock, and there are laws, and you can figure out what the laws are, and you can fix the clock and make it run better, and you can create new clocks, and you can make things, and you can control nature. You can control nature, you see. But you don't need to pray to God to fix things. You figure out what the law is. So this changed everything, you see. But it wiped out the sacred. What's sacred in a clock mechanism? What's sacred in a factory assembly line? What's sacred in the Industrial Revolution, where everybody just fits into a machine? And you don't, you don't make whole things, you make pieces. They're fragmented. Mankind is fragmented like a ball of mercury hit with a hammer, poof, and everybody's just a piece here and a piece there and a piece. What's sacred, you see? The sacred is whole. The sacred is... Is, is that which contains everything. So there are a few things that are sacred in our world today. Babies are sacred. We know the sacred when a baby's born. We just hold that baby. That baby is just illuminating sacredness. Everybody looks at it. Uh, everybody is focused on it. Everybody wants to touch it. Everybody wants the baby to look at me, look at me. See me like God. Will you see me, God? Look at me, God. Oh, Guru, just look at me. The baby, oh, the baby looked at me and smiled. <laughs> you see? Sacred. Weddings are sacred. Because it's a birth. It's a whole, it's a, the birth of a relationship that creates, that creates life, you see. A relationship that creates life at its beginning is sacred. So there are a few things left in the uh, liberal world, let's say, that is sacred. Well, what? So what? And I've been, you know, we're we're all looking at. Um, at least I do. I, I I keep putting on a wider angle lens. You see, when I don't understand something, it's because my lens is too narrow. My my I'm focusing on something and I've forgotten the background, the context. So I re oh a wide angle lens. See, a narrow focus lens, I used to, I'm a photographer, focuses on something or a group of things, but it doesn't, the background's in blurred. <laughs> you see? So what's the background? Um, if you're looking at this, that's some ash um, from incense. Sacred. <laughs> Sacred ash. So, so this wide-angle lens, see, whenever we get out, whenever we get confused and we can't understand something, you need a wide-angle lens. Your lens is too focused, you see. Life has changed. The background is bigger. And you're still focused on a group of things or one thing or the end of your finger. See, if you just focus on that, you see, what? what is that? 
Oh, it's a finger. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a hand. Oh, what is that? Wide angle lens. It, it's an arm. Oh, what is that? I don't understand. Wide angle lens. It belongs to a body. Oh, what is that body? Oh, it's in a room. Oh, what is that room? Wide angle. It's a house. Oh, what is that house? Oh, it's in a town. What is that? that oh, it's in a state. You see? Boom, 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 boom. That's the way understanding works. Wide angle becomes narrow, becomes wide, becomes narrow, becomes wide, becomes boom, 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 boom. That's what gets me high. <laughs> Putting on a wide angle lens. I'm expanded. That's my Zen fit. I'm expanded. I see. The context gives meaning to the, what we focus on. If you focus on, I, anyway, I guess I'm trying to come back to this, what is sacred. Well, sacred is when you see the whole that contains the parts. But, but you can't see the whole, because if you did, then it's a part. Think about that. You cannot, we cannot see the whole context, because if you could see the whole context, then it would be a part of something greater that we can't see because we need another wide-angle lens. So you can never get a wide-angle lens that will see everything because everything is not something. If it's something, then that something has a background, has that. If you see this, there's that which is hidden. And it's that that gives meaning to this. So we need to keep expanding. I hope I've, maybe I've confused you. hope not. <laughs> confused myself. But where I did is the sacred is the whole that cannot be seen. So when you look at a baby, the baby's sacred because you cannot see the whole life of the baby. You see the potential for all life. All life in the cosmos is in that baby. But you don't see all life in the car. You see the baby. But the baby is all life. Because the baby now has not become something, a person with a history and a pattern. We talked about patterns yesterday. The baby has not become a pattern yet. It's a potential pattern. A potential pattern. So the sacred then is potential. And the potential of everything, you see. So like a marriage, that is potential for a creating a new family. We don't know what it's going to be, but it's potential. So the potential is contained in the particular. So if you look at photography then, you look at a, uh, a, 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 a mockingbird sitting on a fence post. If you really zoom in, the whole background will be blurred. You don't know where it is. If you don't know if it's in a forest or you... You don't know what pasture it is. You don't know where it's located. All you see is that mockingbird on a fence post. Narrow focus lens, you see. But that mockingbird on the fence post holds the whole context. So now you zoom out. Wide angle. Oh, it's in a pasture. Oh, the pasture is in a forest. Oh, the forest is, is in a mountain valley. Oh, the mountain valley is in, you see, so all of that whole universe, you see, is potentially in that little mockingbird sitting on there. But our lens won't allow us to see that. So we don't really know what the meaning of that mockingbird is. What's the story of that mockingbird? How did it get there? Where is it? You see, so we always, we forget we need the background in order to give meaning to the mockingbird. Not, not the factual, not the scientific meaning of the mockingbird. The scientific meaning would be, oh, the mockingbirds are made up of feathers, and the feathers are made of this, and you zoom in, you see, you zoom in the molecules and the atoms, and the chemistry, and all of that, you see, is the scientific. But that's not the meaning of the mockingbird. You ever listen to a mockingbird song? You see, what's the meaning of the The meaning is not in the molecules. The meaning is not by zooming in, you see. The meaning is by zooming out. Oh, the mockingbirds in a pasture. Or the you know what I see what I'm seeing? The, the, the story of the mockingbird is the meaning. The sound of the mockingbird is the meaning. 
the color, the relationships. Oh, there's the meaning, you see, not the, not the molecules and the chemistry. Well, that's valuable, but it's not the whole story, you see. So the sacred contains the story. The sacred contains the, the, the whole is contained in the particular, not just the parts of the particular. See, so science focuses in on the parts, but the sacred focuses in on meaning, the story, you see. So, so what I'm getting at here, now I'm really going to make a leap here, because I started out this morning uh, thinking about the difference between, uh, there was a picture I wrote about yesterday, which showed a bunch of uh, women in Iran in the 60s, and they looked just like women in the 60s in our short skirts, long hair, and they were all sitting in the park writing or doing something. And uh, the 60s and the 70s in Iran was, was like America, like it was a Western country. Uh, women were liberated, uh, everybody was, their art was flourishing, um, everything was flourishing, and then the Ayatollah, and then the Ayatollah came along and turned it into a conservative, religious, uh, conservative religious state where the women were clothed. Uh, the women wore black, you see. The feminine principle was removed, was hidden, you see. The background changed, you see, the background changed. The same thing happened in our country. Well, well all right, so I'm, gonna, I'm trying to draw together the meaning of the sacred here, so hang in with me. We're just putting on a wider angle lens. So the same thing happened in our country. Look at the 60s. Liberation of individual expression and freedom, basically. You can be free to create your own world. Have a commune. Like experiment with different, different ways of living. Uh, be a, be a, a, a hippie. Be a yogi. Uh, be a uh, Krishna consciousness. Shave your head. Wear, wear white clothes and walk in the airport and chant... Hari Ram, Hari Ram. <laughs> Experiment. How does that work with you, you see? Experiment. Express yourself. Wear different clothes. Let your hair long. Let your hair short. Have a beard. Don't have a beard. Express yourself. Smoke, smoke weed. Don't smoke weed. Take LSD. Don't take... Experiment, you see. That was the 60s and the 70s. But then the reaction came in, you see. The father came in. What's going on in these kids here? They're not going to be anything. Get a job, you punk, you hippie. Get a job. Stop taking drugs. Nixon came in, established law and order, restored the sacred. The Ayatollah restored the sacred. See, what's the difference in the sacred here? For the, Lib for the liberals and the hippies and the 60s and the 70s, the sacred was individual expression. It's sacred to express myself. We still believe that. We're all doing that now. New fashion. Oh, put, it's, I, can, I, can, I can put a ring in my nose. <laughs> Everything is out of the box now. But in the 60s, it was just cracking open. Express yourself. Be different, you see. Wear your hair a little bit longer. Oh, no. <laughs> Women, that... Uh, Short hair, men, long hair, oh, <laughs> you see, <coughs> express yourself. So this whole idea of the clamp down, the right, came in in both countries at the same time. Nixon, of course, at the end of the 70s, the Ayatollah came in, and Reagan came in. Reagan was Nixon with a smile. <laughs> Nixon was... <laughs> Nixon was a, was a mean daddy. Uh, Reagan was a good daddy. Same daddy. <laughs> Clamp down. So, you know, but, but, but you see the point here is that both nations had, but, but the uh, is, Iran, <clears throat> the Ayatollah came in and clamped the, the father, the cleric, you see, the minister, uh, came in and clamped down on these uh, rebellious uh, Kids, you see, clamped down, made them obey the cleric, you see, obey 
Allah. Allah became sacred. Now, what was sacred under Nixon and Reagan? The nation is sacred. Obey the nation. That was the problem with Nixon. And that was Nixon's problem, was that the war protesters, he felt, was a protest against him. You see, just like Trump does, it was a personal protest. And since Nixon said, I am America, you're protesting against America. And that's anti-American. So you're, you're anti-American, so that I have the right then to investigate you or kick you out, you see. The whole idea then in the West with the right is that the sacred, we all need the sacred, the sacred became the nation. My nation, right or wrong. Nation, president, flag, obedience, sacred. You don't question the sacred. You surrender. You're obedient to it. You love it. You die for it. You die for the sacred. You see, so in the West, a secular nation that grew out of the Enlightenment, the sacred still has to be there. You still have to have sacred. You can't live without the sacred. So it made the nation sacred. It's called nationalism. The nation becomes a church. The nation becomes a church, and the president becomes God, metaphorically speaking. So it's a way to have the sacred and not have the sacred at the same time. Whereas Iran is not hypocritical about it. It says this is a, this is a theocracy, this is a religious, it's not a secular society, it's a religious society, and everybody's going to bow to the Ayatollah, who is the, the Pope or the direct emissary of God, you see. So it's kind of like a Catholic church. You know, and that's up front. But with the, with the West, because we're a secular society, we have to be a little hypocritical about it. We still want the sacred, but we can't have God. Except now, you see, with the religious right, the, 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 uh, the evangelicals don't want to be hypocrites. They're going to say, no, damn it. <laughs> Let's make it a theocracy. Let's put, Christ, let's put the Christian God in the, in the courts and in the classroom. And uh, let's make the president obedient to God. Uh, let's, let's not be a hypocrite about this. You see, so they don't want to be a hypocrite. They want to go ahead and have a country like Iran, a theocracy. That's what they want. Because that restores the sacred and it stops becoming hypocritical. There's nothing more painful than being a hypocrite because you know way down deep inside that you're a lie, that you're a performance, you see. So that's one of the liberating things about Trump is that he allowed the hypocrites to not be hypocrites. So if you're a racist, you can go ahead and say, I'm a racist. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> anyway, this is my Zen fit for today. So. Uh, <laughs> for me, you know, I get pumped up in the morning and I do my writing, I do my talk, and then, then I go until the energy goes until about 1 or 2 o'clock, and then I take a nap and it all goes down the drain. <laughs> anyway, thanks for dropping in, and I'll see you tomorrow, if there is a tomorrow.